So what is the ideal the ideal signal shape? So the ideal ideal signal for cross correlation. So let's um, think of of a good signal now. So how does a good signal look like? Um, so that's again our received signal here of n, and I should not call this t, but but n. And um, of course we have um, really working with samples here. And so imagine, so we are receiving a signal which 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 looks like looks like like that hard to draw and um, and then the next so that's our our symbol symbol t here and then um, let's just keep keep a gap here and um, keep something something like that and so our cyclic prefix would look a bit like that yeah so that's a copy of this one here so that's here t and then um, and then here again let's uh, just leave this gap here and let's say then then we have then we have something something like that as a symbol here so that's t and um, so we create a copy of this as some some kind of high frequency stuff here and so on and so on and so and so we see we see already the the idea here that it works. It works much better here because these symbols, symbols look look more or less like a random um, symbol itself. So, so obviously, it's very easy to see the start of the symbol by comparing these sections here, and it's very easy to see the start of the symbol by comparing these sections here. And so, so the ideal, the ideal signal. Should be essentially something close to close to close to a random signal. Close to a random to a random signal. Because then we have um, unique signatures for the symbol start. So unique. signatures for for the symbol start it also means that the cross correlation stays more or less zero um, all the time except when these similarities show up here and then it will just quickly go to its squared value and then drop down to zero so we need to have something like close close to random we need to randomize our um, signal 